Thank you, Speaker. Honourable colleagues, I am pleased to be the sponsor of Bill S6, an act respecting regulatory modernisation, and to speak to it at second reading. Bill S6 has been introduced in this chamber so that we can thoroughly study it on behalf of Canadians. I'd like to thank all of you in advance for your wise counsel on this bill, and I look forward to our collective deliberations. Les entreprises sont Businesses are the backbone of Canada's economic success. They create the products, services, and wealth that have made our country so prosperous. As we emerge from the pandemic and look forward to economic recovery, Bill S6 would help Canadian businesses by ensuring the regulatory system evolves along with changing technologies and reflects today's realities. This bill will make regulatory processes simpler and easier to navigate, moving paper-based or in-person processes online and ensuring Canadian regulations keep pace with international trends. Specifically, Bill S6 proposes to modify 29 acts through 46 amendments, and it applies to 12 departments and agencies. While the immediate impact of each proposal is relatively modest, all the proposals aim to eliminate legislative irritants and to reduce overall administrative burden that have become barriers to innovation and economic growth. What's more, all of the proposals are cost-neutral and the associated risks are low to non-existent. Taken together, these amendments represent a meaningful change to the federal regulatory system and the need for continued commitment to its modernization. Avant d'entrer... Before getting into a few of the details of the bill, let me provide a bit of background on its origin. The process to modernize regulations is part of the mandate of the President of the Treasury Board of Canada. In her mandate letter from the Prime Minister, Minister Fortier, is asked to continue regulatory reform efforts in collaboration with her Cabinet colleagues. This includes improving transparency, reducing administrative burden and harmonizing regulations that maintain high safety standards and improve the competitiveness of Canadian businesses. The bill is meant to be a recurring legislative mechanism that allows the federal government to address overly complicated, inconsistent or outdated requirements and to keep the regulatory system relevant and up to date. It is designed to address legislative challenges raised by businesses and all Canadians through consultations and targeted regulatory reviews. Business stakeholders, including the Economic Strategy Tables and the Advisory Council on Economic Growth, have emphasized the importance of regularized mechanisms in order to review and update Canada's regulatory system. In addition, the External Advisory Committee on Regulatory Competitiveness, made up of business, academic and consumer stakeholders, has recommended that there be continued efforts to reduce the administrative burden of regulations and to assure, ensure that they are future-proofed, which means keeping pace with changing technologies and business realities. By amending laws that are too inflexible, too specific or simply outdated, this bill is an important reminder of the need for ongoing regulatory review and legislation that stands the test of time. The bill does just that, and it also helps address irritants in regulatory processes, ensuring that our regulatory system evolves with the times. This bill is a key part of the government's plan to improve the regulatory system. Initiatives supporting regulatory reform 
were announced in four successive budgets beginning in 2017. In the 2018 fall economic statement, the government announced that starting in 2019, it would introduce annual legislation to ensure that the regulatory system evolves with changing technologies and reflects the current realities, challenges and opportunities faced by business. Accordingly, the Budget Implementation Act 2019 number no. 1 included a regulatory modernization component that modified 12 pieces of legislation. That bill included measures to digitize paper-based processes, enable innovation through regulatory sandboxes that allow exemptions from certain regulatory requirements to test new products, and to make rule changes in consideration of zero-emission vehicles. The current bill, S6, would have arrived in Parliament sooner, but for the COVID-19 pandemic. It was, however, foreshadowed in Budget 2021, in which the government committed to table in Parliament the second annual regulatory modernisation bill, which is F6. Let me now turn to some of the key amendments proposed in this bill. There is a change, for example, to the Canada Food Inspection Agency Act that would allow the CFIA to deliver services and businesses to interact with it, with the agency, using electronic means rather than having to rely solely on paper-based transactions. This will reduce administrative burden for businesses and allow them greater flexibility in their interactions with government. In addition, there are amendments to the Canada Transportation Act that would allow for new mechanisms to integrate changes more quickly to international safety standards. This would ensure that our transportation sectors are meeting the most up-to-date safety standards, keeping pace with changes in technology and innovation. The Standards Council of Canada, on whose board I served for a number of years, examined 34 Transport Canada regulations in 2021 and found that 41% of the standards referenced in those regulations are outdated. There are also changes to the Department of Citizenship and Immigration Act to enable information sharing to help administer any federal or provincial law for permanent and temporary residents. This would support collaboration between federal departments, provinces and territories and enable faster processing of applications to address labour market needs. Did you know that 50% of permanent residency applicants already have temporary residency applications approved and hence have already provided much of the information needed for their PR applications. And this is not trivial because some forms require the applicants to address more than 100 questions. There are other amendments, for example, to the Canada Business Corporations Act, the Canada Not-for-Profit Corporations Act, and the Canada Cooperatives Act to simply change the term annual return so that it doesn't create confusion to stakeholders. Colleagues, if you are thinking to yourself, what could be so confusing about the term annual return, and asking yourself, isn't it just the tax return that companies have to file every year? The answer is that it isn't. And if you figured that they were one and the same, you would be among the thousands of Canadian business owners who have been confused by this nomenclature. In fact, the annual return that is referenced in the Corporations Act and related acts is not the same as the tax return which is administered by the CRA. Rather, it is an annual submission to provide updated information about the entity, shareholders, directors and officers. 
not filing this information for a number of years can result in a company being dissolved as well as expenses to revive the company. A simple, possibly innocent error due to confusing nomenclature can result in significant consequences. And the proposed amendment in S6 seeks to eliminate the likelihood of such errors. Adding clarity through these amendments would reduce the risk of active corporations becoming dissolved because they did not file. I would also mention the amendments to the Electricity and Gas Inspection Act to allow the use of different sampling methods to verify electric and gas meter measurements. Electric and gas meters are used by utility companies in residential and commercial properties to track energy usage for billing purposes. Allowing greater flexibility in the sampling and testing approach would help ensure that Measurement Canada, the agency responsible for regulation, would allow Measurement Canada to only sample what is required and to verify accurate readings, saving time and money. There are also amendments to the Fisheries Act that would clarify that fisheries officers have the authority to use alternative measures in response to minor violations, which is an authority that was unclear in the existing legislation. This change could not only reduce the number of lengthy and costly court processes, but also ensure that small violations don't result in criminal records and the stigma and barriers that can come with it. The use of such alternative measures has been supported by the fishing community and by Indigenous groups. In fact, all of the proposed amendments come from either the advice of multi-stakeholder groups that are involved in ongoing consultations, or targeted regulatory reviews, or from the recommendations of our very own Joint Standing Committee on the scrutiny of regulations. I have been a member of what we call REGS almost the entire time that I have served in the Senate, and I'm very pleased for the recognition that this bill gives to the important work of that committee. Perhaps next time there's committee selection, there will be a rush of applicants to join the REGS committee. Uh, since the amendments are both disparate and quite technical, I will not be able to address all of them in this speech, or likely even to address all of the questions you may have on very specific items in the bill. Which is why I think the best place to study the specific amendments is in committee, and I would encourage us to send the bill to the relevant committees as soon as possible so that they have sufficient time to do their work. Honourable colleagues, these are just a few of the amendments included in the bill, but I think they give you a sense of the breadth and potential impact of having it passed. Looking ahead, the Treasury Board Secretariat is already considering proposals for the third annual regulatory modernisation bill. A key theme of this next round of modernisation will be how it might contribute to the response to COVID-19 and recovery efforts uh, to that end. Businesses and all Canadian stakeholders will have the opportunity to share their views on improving the regulatory system. A consultation will take place this fall to collect ideas for potential amendments to be included in subsequent regulatory modernization bills. Let me add that because this is meant to be an annual exercise with an annual regulatory modernization bill introduced each year, passing this bill as six as a standalone will help establish a precedent for future bills and I hope establish the commitment that Parliament has 
to ongoing improvements to our regulatory system. Colleagues, in addition to the annual regulatory modernization bill exercise, there are other ongoing initiatives to modernize our regulatory system. For example, there's a process of targeted regulatory reviews to reduce barriers to economic growth and competitiveness and to advance novel regulatory approaches to support innovation. Federal regulators are also implementing regulatory roadmaps for two rounds of reviews. Some of the areas of focus for these regulatory reviews have included agri-food and aquaculture, health and biosciences, transportation, clean technology and international standards, to name just a few. Indeed, some of the changes proposed in Bill S6 stem from the regulatory reviews that I've just described. There is also within government something called the Center for Regulatory Innovation, which promotes a whole-of-government approach to regulatory experimentation to support innovation and competitiveness and help regulators and the regulatory system keep pace with technological advances. Finally, Canada is actively engaging with partners in the United States and the EU, as well as with provinces and territories to reduce unnecessary regulatory differences and eliminate duplicative requirements among jurisdictions. Honourable colleagues, this bill is about modernising Canada's federal regulatory system. It seeks to make the system more efficient and less burdensome while maintaining protections for consumers, health, safety and the environment. I look forward to working with all of you on this bill and hope we can soon send it to committees for their detailed scrutiny of the proposed amendments. Je vous remercie. Thank you. Senator Quinn, followed by Senator Batters. Would the Honourable Senator Wu accept the question? Yes, of course. Thank you. Uh, Honourable Senators, I rise this afternoon on behalf of our Honourable colleague, uh, Senator Rob Black, who can't be with us this afternoon. So the question for the, for the past few years, there's been an extensive work highlighting the importance of regulatory modernization to Canadian agriculture and, by extension, the Canadian economy. Starting with the Advisory Council on Economic Growth, the Barton Report, and followed by the Agri-Food Economic Strategy Table, this work culminated in an Agri-Food and Aquaculture Regulatory Review and Roadmap that involves significant consultations with agri-food stakeholders. How does this bill, which touches on many critical pieces of legislation for Canadian farmers, relate to that roadmap and reflect the voices of Canadian farmers that inform that work? And thank you, Senator Black, um, for uh, being the originator of the question. Uh, by my count, uh, 22, possibly 23 of the amendments out of the 46 in the bill apply to the agriculture and agri-food sector. Uh, many of those amendments derive precisely from the regulatory uh, efforts and consultations that you reference, both the agriculture and aquaculture uh, regulatory review process, as well as the so-called Barton uh, Commission or Barton Report. To give you uh, some examples, number uh, 17 on the Feeds Act and number 25 on the uh, number 17 on the, on the Feeds Act and number 25 on the Seeds Act, Feeds and Seeds. Uh, require, uh, will bring about a change in the, regula in the uh, legislation to allow for mutual recognition of uh, feed and seed safety guidelines between Canada and a partner country, what they call equivalence or mutual recognition agreements, in order for uh, processes and seeds and fertilizers and other materials to be shared between the two countries without repeating the testing and approval process. That uh, is believed to be helpful to our industry and to uh, augment and enhance trade between Canada and trading partners. 
Another example would be Amendment Number 30, which has to do with the control of uh, breakouts of animal disease. The current legislation uh, is a bit unclear in terms of what is a control area and whether a place which has uh, an incidence of this disease would be considered to be uh, subject to the regulations even if it is outside the control area. The amendment makes clear that a so-called place that is, uh, uh, that is designated would be subject to the same restrictions even if it was not part of the so-called control area. Senator Quinn, you have a supplementary? Uh, no, thank you, Speaker. Senator Batters? Thank you. Um, Senator Wu, um, I actually had the, um, the privilege of being the co-chair of the Scrutiny of Regulations Committee um, in 2014 and 2015 prior to that election, and I was a member of it for a couple of years before that. Um, from the time that I came to the Senate. So I certainly know and understand that it's, it is a very important committee where this type of technical work gets done. And it was something actually stemming from my work in the province of Saskatchewan when I worked for the government of Saskatchewan there that I thought that I saw it as a real benefit to have these types of regular regulatory statutes that are brought forward every quite often. In Saskatchewan, I think they generally try to do it every year or two, where they tidy up these types of regulations and statutes. Um, and it was something that I suggested strongly when I was the co-chair that it be done by the federal government um, to make sure that these types of uh, uh, corrections can be made in a timely way for these statutes. So, um, but I don't think that that has happened. I, I'm not sure how many times since the Trudeau government has been in power, these types of um, regulatory statutes have been brought in to do these tidy-ups. Maybe you, could you please answer that? And also, um, I noticed that I think it was just yesterday that the Scrutiny of Regulations Committee had its first meeting, I think, of this parliamentary session, it's several months into it already. So um, has that been also a problem and that we haven't had very many Scrutiny of Regulations meetings? We used to have them every two weeks when I was the co-chair. Senator Wu. Yes, thank you, Senator Battis, for the question. Uh, let me start with uh, the uh, question about the committee's constitution. We did, in fact, meet uh, yesterday for the first time in this parliament, and I'm honoured to uh, have been elected co-chair together with uh, MP Blake Richards from the House of Commons. And we will be meeting uh, every two weeks now till we rise in the summer and hope to get as much work done as possible. Um, some of the work of uh, regs can translate into immediate change on the part of the government if it doesn't require a change in legislation. And in fact, you will know, since you were the former co-chair, a number of the requests that the committee has made to departments pointing out errors in their writing of regulations has resulted in them making the changes. Sometimes it's like pulling teeth, you, you will remember. But uh, that kind of progress can be made without, in fact, changing the acts. Of course, if uh, errors spotted by the regs committee require changes in, in legislation, then we are into this kind of process here. And indeed, uh, Bill S6 uh, contains at least a dozen measures that derive directly from the direct or indirect advice of the Rex Committee. Uh, happy to uh, provide more information on what specific advice was given, but we should take pride, those of you who have served on this committee, that uh, our observations in that committee have resulted, or with the blessing of this chamber and the House, will result in changes to legislation. But S6 is much more than just cleaning up of uh, regulations and laws based on the comments of the Rex Committee. The majority of changes in Essex, in fact, derive from either the regulatory uh, review process uh, that is held with uh, uh, business and consumer stakeholder groups, the sort that Senator Quinn uh, referred to, or they derive from targeted regulatory reviews that the government has launched in particular sectors. And so we have three 
streams of material that have fed into S6. We have the work of the REGS committee, often of a technical nature and to do with integrity of the bill. We have the regulatory review consultation process with stakeholders, and we have uh, finally the targeted regulatory reviews that are led by uh, departments. Senator Batters, you have a supplementary? I do. Um, so Senator Wu, thanks for that. Uh, but it remains unanswered, and perhaps you can answer this. Is this the first regulatory statute of this type from the Trudeau government in the six and a half years in power? And if not, how many have there been? And my other question would be, um, how many meetings did your committee have during the last parliamentary session, given that we've already gone several months and we've just had the first one for this particular session? Senator Booth. Yes, uh, this is the, uh, we call it the second annual uh, regulatory modernization bill. Uh, the first one was part of the 2019 Budget Implementation Act. It was embedded within that uh, bill, but very clearly spelled out as the first set of uh, regulatory modernization activities. So the short answer is that this is number two. Uh, insofar as the REGS committee uh, meeting in the last parliament, I believe we had one uh, substantive meeting, uh, and the reasons are well known to all of us. There was, um, it was lower in the pecking order in terms of priority time slots for committees to meet. Being a joint committee made it more complicated. There were delays in the nomination of the co-chair on the other side. Uh, and of course, there was a short parliamentary uh, session. However, I, I, as I mentioned, uh, we now have some runway. With a bit of luck, we can get uh, five meetings in before the end of June, and we hope to get a lot done. Senator Richards, followed by Senator Patterson. Senator yes, Richards. thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Senator Wu, would you take a quick question? Yes, of course. Yeah, okay. You mentioned the, in this Regulation Act the relaxation of fishery charges. Uh, would you have any information on that or, or what specific charges you're talking about? And if you don't have them at hand, could you maybe get in, uh, send, send me an email about them, please? Senator Wu. Yes, thank you, uh, Senator Richards. Uh, the, the best place to get those detailed answers uh, is, is in, in committee, and I look forward to detailed scrutiny. But um, I think it's not so much a relaxation of rules, but rather the ability for fisheries officers to legally use uh, alternative dispute settlement mechanisms for minor uh, infractions of the Fisheries Act. Senator Richards, you have a supplementary? No, I don't. No, I don't, madam. Thank you. Senator Patterson? Yes, I'd like to ask uh, Senator Wu a question. Uh, Senator Wu, thanks for that uh, um, informative speech. Uh, you have urged that uh, the, the bill go to committee, uh, but it covers a very large, broad area and a number of uh, uh, existing statutes. So could you share with us, uh, do you see one committee being a main committee? How, how would committees of the Senate deal with such a broad piece of legislation? Thank you. Senator Wu. Thank you, Senator Patterson. Uh, the, the question and the decision on which committee or committees it goes to is now beyond my pay grade. I know the leaders are discussing this issue. Uh, I believe they are contemplating sending it to multiple committees. I think we can roughly guess which committees are suited for which amendments. But I, I do agree with you if, if, in fact, that's what you were suggesting, that there should be a master committee. Again, I leave that to uh, the decision of the, uh, the leadership. What I will say, though, uh, colleagues, is that um, it, it, if we if we agree that regulatory modernization is a good thing uh, and that we should do it on a regular basis, so sort of like house cleaning, right? If we, if we have to do a spring cleaning every year, let's think about how best to do it in the Senate. 
how best to organize ourselves so that we don't have to, you know, have to debate which broom to use and which mop is the most efficient. Uh, I personally would like to see us play a leadership role in the broader issue of regulatory reform for this country and to provide some leadership in Parliament in pushing this agenda on a regular basis, regardless of the government in place. And this, uh, this uh, bill will give us the opportunity to think about what some best practices might be.